I want to show you this really cool tool for threat hunting across computer network data. This is AC Hunter. It's a project put together by Active Countermeasures, and it is awesome at helping find and uncover malicious network traffic on your computers and other hosts. It focuses on tracking down beacons or code and implants that calls out to command and control servers for further tasking or just checking in over and over and over again. And to be honest, it just looks really cool. It feels like threat hunting is a video game. You can track down the fully qualified domain name for different internet access points or strange sketchy URLs and domains, even long connections, and do some deep dives on network data that could come from a PCAP or packet capture and Zeek logs. And we'll dig into a report from Rita, an open source framework for detecting that command and control communication in real intelligence threat analytics. So I am inside of a Windows virtual machine, and I'll tell you more about that in a second, but I am going to open up the file explorer so I can go navigate to the tools directory here in this virtual machine. I want to drill down into this Rita HTML report and the index HTML file. I want to open that up in my web browser. So I'll double click on this. So this is an exported report from that Rita utility. And I wanna go check out one of these individual data sets. I'll go look at VS Agent 2017, 315. And there is a lot that we could explore here, all of it present in the navigation up at the top. We could drill down into the beacons that we're detecting, DNS records, results, lookups, blacklisted IP addresses, host names, and more. Let me click on the beacons tab at the top. And now we can get a bird's eye view, giving us a little bit more insight and understanding as to what IP addresses, what hosts and computers might have a beacon or backdoor present on that host communicating outward to external internet devices. A lot of different malware samples might have a different heartbeat or how frequently and how commonly they'll connect to that external host. The consistency of that heartbeat and how frequently it communicates or calls back to given an interval to the command and control server, that makes for the score. And a set of one here is really just perfect, constant, real-time communication. We do see a whole lot of connections coming from this top result here. Looks like there are a ton of bytes coming through about four and a half thousand times with an interval range of eight and these communicating IP addresses. So that might be one worth digging into. And I'll tell you, that is from the VS agent. Some program, some application, and I might be wrong here, but I think that is the VS agent from like Kaseya VSA, the remote monitoring and management utility that is gonna have a certain heartbeat and life cycle to repeatedly communicate with the agent. And that is frequent communication to a single IP address, but not everything operates that way. Different backdoors or other different malware samples might do something different. So we could actually go view another data set here. I want to go take a look at DNS cat 2017 320. How about that? If we take a look at the report from this data set, the beacons actually isn't all that telling. There isn't one, hey, a huge anomalous outlier that clues us in. Maybe something is off here. This communicates over DNS, the domain name system, right? So if I actually switch to that DNS tab, we could see something that has a whole lot more communication, a uh, couple domains or top level domains like com and .net and .org, etc. But there are some that stand above the rest, like Nanobot Ninjas and cat.nanobotninjas.com. I don't know if it's immediately clear to you, but over 40,000 requests for a single specific domain is a little absurd, and that's probably worth digging into. Now, with some background on Rita, I would love to showcase AC Hunter, that tool from Active Countermeasures. But hey, by the way, all of this, the, even this lab, is a showcase from the Pay What You Can training and a lot of the the free introductory courses that come from anti-siphon training and Black Hills Information Security and Active Countermeasures, all of the incredible tribe of companies put together by John Strand. Look, if you haven't seen it before, the Pay What You Can training is phenomenal because you could literally get some courses, some training, some education, and some material to learn from and improve your cybersecurity career for whatever price you want. You get to choose, hey, how much are you willing to cost and afford for that training? And a lot of that stuff is completely free. Like this lab is available on GitHub. Rita is open source and accessible. And you can even download the community edition of AC Hunter and kick the tires yourself. With that said, let me pull back the curtain a little bit because I wanted to show this GitHub article right up. This markdown file is what is walking us through this exact scenario where we're digging into Rita, showcasing some of the things we could learn and analyze from its report. And then finally, we can move on to go explore AC Hunter. It gives us a link and we can go play with this in the cloud.
Let's go to training.aihosted.com. Hey, look at this. It's super cool. AC Hunter, and we'll just enter the email address and password provided. Credentials should just be training at blackhillsinfosec.com, and the password is got beacons question mark. All right, jumping in. Here is AC Hunter. Man, it looks so cool. Okay, so the first thing that we could do is actually change the data set that we're going to look at, right? And we were just looking at the VS agent. What I could do is actually go click the gear icon that's available in the top right. If you're in the dashboard, the home icon on the bottom left. And if I click on this, we can choose the database and data set we're looking at. Let's just go back to VS Agent. Go ahead and confirm that. And now we can see all of those IP addresses and the threat activity in the different score here that's defined on the right hand side. Sometimes it is a little tough to tell what AC Hunter is doing, but if I click in on any of these IP addresses or other hosts on the left hand side, you can just barely see the threat activity change just as well on the right. But I'm interested on in all those different metrics. Could I go take a look at the beacon score for this IP address 10.55.100.111? Let me check out the beacon score. Now this is where things get super duper cool because we could see, hey, all the results for beacons that we might be tracking, some of the fully qualified domain names, even long connections or things that might have matched any specific signatures or fired off any alarm bells for different threat intelligence feeds. And if I zoom out just a smidge, we could toggle maybe just our filter. Hey, what is the score threshold that we wanna be looking at in these results that are up on the left-hand side? If we tweak this and tune this, we could filter down to some of the hosts that had more agreement egregious detection and things to worry about. Down at the bottom, you can see how often and how frequently they are getting their connections. We could even explore some of the connection intervals, just hovering over the histogram graph here. And we could see what it's connecting to. Like, hey, this looks like a digital ocean entry, maybe over in the United States, given some geolocation and how it's communicating over what ports. And as we explore different results, we can go see anything else that just sticks out like a sore thumb. This is pretty neat for tracking down obviously egregious evil beaconing network traffic. Now, if I pivot back to our GitHub lab super quick, this is just a simple showcase. It's offering out, hey, this awesome tool for you, but we have a couple exercises or things that we might be able to dig into. If I switch to the WinLab agent data set, we could drill down to see the connection interval for one of these hosts. Is something pretty alarming. Now we know how to do that super well, right? We'll go back to our dashboard. We'll go ahead and click on the gear to switch to the data set, the WinLab agent. Let me confirm that. Now that IP address, 10.10.98.30, we could go take a look at the beacon score, FQDN score, proxy, any of the stuff. But if I hover over it, remember, just this histogram should show me a pretty frequent connection over almost 4,000 connections at about 15 seconds given the interval. Maybe it's a silly thing to have intuition based off of oh, a round number, but 15 seconds is like just enough to sound like that's an indicator, right? Another little exercise for us in the GCAT data set, what is the historic fully qualified domain name for the beacon on this IP address? Ooh, GCAT, uh, that's kind of a neat thing. I have a hunch, like I wonder if that's just communicating like DNS cat is over DNS, right? Is G supposed to reference like Google and Gmail and things? Uh, that host is 1055, 100, 111. So let me go take a look at the beacon score and we should be able to see just up at the top here. Yeah, look at this historic FQDN is gmail smtp.google, smtp.gmail.com. If I go take a look at the beacons FQDN, we can see that, hey, yep, domain Gmail set up here. It's gonna have a lot of connections and about an 11 second interval with a lot of the details here. Couple other hits and entries, but this is just cool. I can look over at the long connection section and there is one on that host with an oddball IP address destination, but we could click on this copy to clipboard, check it out in Alien Vault, Threat Crowd, Shodan, Google, Virus Total, anything. Uh, what will Shodan give us? Oh, nothing. Okay, that's fine. Does Virus Total know anything about that IP address? That's all Microsoft stuff. I don't want that. I want the Google things. I'm not certain if that is an IP address for Google or like Gmail servers. We could keep drilling down into it if we wanted to, but I just wanted to show you how easily it is to pivot from AC Hunter to any of the other tools you might have in your toolkit. I think we do have a clear answer though, that GCAT, this data set, is gonna be communicating with Gmail or Google services, right? This is sweet. Actually researching it, finding it online, it's a stealthy Python-based backdrop 
back door that uses Gmail as command and control server. They do mention this was originally inspired from some uh, proof of concept code, and this is still just kind of a testing playground. But I like that this was put together to showcase and demo how you could track down command and control infrastructure stuff like using tools like Rita and AC Hunter. Kind of cool. Oh, they even have awesome ASCII art. <laughs> Look at this. GCAT, I'm in your computers watching your screens. That's pretty awesome though, not gonna lie. I think that's pretty cool. You can just use command and control over Gmail and a little Python backdoor. Run commands, yeah, do whatever you want. It's all over Google. Another quick example of something we could track down, questions we could answer with AC Hunter. For the DNS cat dataset, what domain has the highest lookup count? Okay, so we can drill down. Let's get back to our dashboard, take a look at the DNS cat 2 JA3 strobe agent dataset, and we could dig into a lot of those long connections or FQDNs, things that are being looked up over DNS. Whoa, a lot of lookups, about 109,000 for r-1x.com. Another one, DNSC. That sounds like DNS cat, not gonna lie. Amazon's up there too, but that might look just kind of natural. R1x looks like it's getting a lot of connections from 192.168.88.2. Well, now we know that's probably a machine word looking into seeing what weird stuff has gone there on the host and on the endpoint. But I think that this AC Hunter is pretty cool for getting a big visibility, big picture view of what's going on on the network and what stuff has a certain constant heartbeat that is worth maybe looking into that could be a beacon. We're detecting that command and control communication and that is something that you might wanna kick the tires with and try it out even in your own environment. Link in the video description if you wanted to learn more. And of course, hey, take a look at the pay what you can training, all the incredible stuff, education that's put out there by anti-siphon training, Black Hills Information Security, AC, Active Countermeasures, Wild West Hacking Fest, seriously, all the fantastic and phenomenal tribe of companies put out by that group. Hey, I'm a huge fanboy, but you know it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those YouTube algorithm things, and I'll see you in the next video.